Greetings and welcome to Zambition. My name is Martin Kalungubanda, your host on this channel. In this episode, we look at medicine and therefore I have the privilege of interviewing two medical doctors. The first one is Dr. Yapoka Zimba. Dr. Zimba is seen by many as a young, passionate and purpose-driven medical doctor. She graduated from Ryazan State Medical School or University in Russia in 2018. Dr. Zimba has had the privilege of working in various departments of hospitals in Lusaka where she has learned and continues to learn immensely. Dr. Zimba recently completed her internship and was awarded the best doctor for the month when she worked with the Children's Hospital. She was recognized for her outstanding commitment her dedication to serving people when they are in their weakest moment of life, sick or attending to a sick one. Dr. Zimba, welcome to Zambition. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to be part of this program. Our next guest is Dr. Ali Kinkoma. Dr. Nkoma is a consultant physician who specializes in the diseases of liver. He trained and qualified at the University of Zambia Medical School and graduated in 1998. He then moved to the United Kingdom in 2001 as a Bait Clinical Research Fellow. He also worked at the Royal London St. Bartholomew's Hospital and the Royal London Medical School. He did his higher specialist clinical training in Leeds at St. James Hospital and Newcastle upon time, the Freeman Hospital. He now works as a consultant gastroenterologist and hepatologist at University Hospitals of the North Midlands in the National Health Service Trust in Stockholm-Trent. Dr. Nkoma is also co-founding director of the Africa Association of Future Gastroenterologists, which is an Africa-wide organization for doctors training in gastroenterology and liver medicine. Quite mouthful. Dr. Nkoma, welcome to Zambition. Uh, thank you for inviting me on your program. My first question to both of you <clears throat> is what are the one or two experiences or stories from your life's journey that you think may have shaped you the most into the persons and professionals you are today? Dr. Zimba. Thank you. So for me, I think I have so many stories, but the one thing that stands out is the constant motivation the constant encouragement and just the support I've gotten from my family and friends. And of course, as the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And so I've gotten a lot of inspiration and um, encouragement and how to, to perform in the professional sector from the different people that I've met in the hospital. What I live by is that if you develop a passion to continuously learn, you never cease to grow. So that is what has helped me, it has shaped me. And of course, in the um, medical field, I've come across so many different patients and they have also impacted my life. And within those stories, um, Dr. Zimba, is there one you can pick and say, this moment or that moment, anyone you can remember? Yes, I can actually remember my great grandfather he uh, ran a mobile hospital. 
he was not a qualified doctor, but somehow from the training that he got during his time, he managed to provide health care to the people in his community. And up until this day, he's still remembered for that. So that also gave me motivation that if I was actually to go into the medical field and actually learn the basics um, that are needed to serve the people, it would actually come a long way. And I would, in a way, at least continue that legacy that he had. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Nkoma, one or two moments among many that may have shaped you the most into the person, the professional you are today. Yeah, so uh, thank you again for inviting me to be on your program. So uh, I'm really humbled. Uh, you've mentioned one or two moments. Uh, I would uh, say, you know, that if I split this into two things, is either, you know, my personal values and uh, my clinical or my medical career. So my personal values were shaped by, you know, my exposure to the Catholic faith. We leave home when we're still young to go to boarding school. And, uh, you know, when we go to school, we live by the expectation of the parents. But really it's experience of, uh, you know, the people you live with, the boys I grew among, and uh, obviously, you know, the teachers that looked after us and uh, their sacrifice to get the best out of us. And then after that, obviously, I went to the University of Zambia. That is really formative when you're at university because a lot of things happened. So we had a very good Catholic community at the medical school. But more importantly, the Catholic Charismatic Renewal community at St. Ignatius. So that really formed my values and I'm really grateful to God that uh, I was exposed to these experiences. Looking at uh, you know my career as a physician, you know, uh, medical school we were taught by very intelligent people. We used to do the best with limited resources at uh, the medical school where I trained uh, at Unza and the University Teaching Hospital. But I can say that the most profound influence was taking an uh, elective to go to another country. I went to Johannesburg uh, at uh, Invest of the Witwaters Run to go and do an elective there. I worked in two hospitals, which were polar opposites. One was uh, Baragwanath Hospital, which was like UTH, you know, so a lot of medicine associated with poverty. And then the Johannesburg General Hospital, where it was high tech medicine with a you know, very high profile people. So you met different personalities there, you know, how you deal with patients whether they are poor or rich. And uh, obviously the choice of my subspeciality was made when I was in Johannesburg. So those I can say are the two defining moments uh, in uh, you know, my career and who I am. Absolutely fascinating. Fascinating in the sense that for you, Dr. Zimba, one of your biggest moment was seeing your great grandfather in those days back home when we had mobile hospitals. And I think also it's in the setting of the church environment that your grandfather did what he did. And, and that inspired you to the point that you ended up taking medicine as your career. Dr. Nkoma, I am fascinated equally by the mention of faith as a guiding light in your study of science medicine and beginning from your uh, background in Eastern province through to the university and the church community uh, within the university and St. Ignatius, many people recognize in Lusaka. Thank you for sharing those moments uh, with us. Yeah, thank you. My next question to you, Dr. Nkoma is, and I will also reverse that to Dr. Zimba. You are both very passionate about your work, your calling as medical doctors. And I say so because I know both of you reasonably well. What do you love about your profession? And what is it that frustrates you, Dr. Nkoma? So, uh, as you rightly said, you know, medicine, it is a different profession to many because uh, 
in the type of medicine that we do, you're actually at the front line. I can say at the apex of the medical food chain, uh, where people are unwell receiving health care. And at that stage, people are vulnerable and they basically rely on your trust, your, your competence, and basically your values. So that is what medicine is about really, you know, in the type of medicine that we do. And uh, our personal interventions, obviously, where we can, because not everything succeeds, tends to make a difference in the lives of the people we look after. And uh, indirectly, that does have an impact on the families or friends that know those people we look after. So that is, uh, you know, what is fascinating about medicine, and that's why we take it very seriously. Uh, it is a challenge, but uh, it is also fun. And and what is it that frustrates you, Dr. Nkoma? So uh, what frustrates me sometimes is, uh, you know, you cannot always do what you want because of, uh, you know, a lack of something that you need or the system that you work through is not always perfect. And, uh, you know, if uh, what you could have done cannot be done and uh, the patient becomes more and more, ends up with disability or dies, that can be frustrating. But the reality is, you know, regardless of what we do, sometimes we cannot get people better because uh, all of us have got to become unwell at some point uh, with an incurable illness and come to an end. So obviously that is not frustrating. It's where, you know, you feel that you can do something about something and that you don't have the resources to do that. More so, you know, when I was in training than where I am now, because obviously we have facilities. But even, you know, this end, you, you do get the, you know, frustrations with the delays in getting what you need timing, you know, teams. So that can be frustrating, uh, but that makes you stronger as a physician to work with teams. Thank you. Sometimes you experience frustration, but the joy of helping not only the patient you're attending to, but also the relationships they have around them brings um, a lot of satisfaction, you say. Absolutely. Dr. Zimba, what do you love about your profession? And what is it that gives you frustration? What I love about the profession is the satisfaction that comes with uh, relieving pain, treating, mm -hmm. and actually curing various diseases. Of course, this is not done only by doctors. This is more of teamwork because there are many people who are involved in, in the health sector. We do endure long working hours and most of the time we have to give up or sacrifice our own personal interests, but it comes at a cost of serving the people. And that's what our passion is. Our passion is to serve the people. Some of the frustrations that I would say I have encountered, well, to give a few examples, are that of the patients. Right now we're dealing with a pandemic of COVID-19 and the example I can cite is giving advice to a patient to do something and they don't take your advice based on their religious or traditional views. So I gave an example of COVID because talking about the vaccine here gives you the notion of it's 666 or it's, re it's related to something, to something that's uh, religious or satanic if I can use that word. So those are some of the frustrations and also people coming late, presenting themselves late to the hospitals. So the disease has already progressed and there's very little you can do. And that that is also very frustrating. And Dr. Zimba, I know you um, uh, uh, slightly uh, more than the listeners um, will uh, uh, notice, but you seem to have, and this is equally true about you, Dr. Nkoma, inexhaustible patience. Um, is it because you try and hide the frustration or you have developed a mechanism that allows you, regardless of the frustrations, to still come across caring, understanding and deeply listening? Dr. Zimba, and then I'll turn on the same question to Dr. Nkoma. Well, for me, I think I put um, 
the betterment of the patient above all else. So it takes a lot of practicing <laughs> to be patient. But at the end of the day, I'm just so grateful that most of us are. We don't allow our human nature to take over what um, the situation is calling for. But otherwise, patience is, is a virtue in the medical field. Dr. Nkoma, you are the I, senior I one in this. Yeah, I agree with uh, Dr. Zimba that, uh, you know, patience is something that you develop as a medical professional because uh, you are dealing with, uh, you know, different people in the population. They come in all forms of, you know, manners, shapes and sizes. Uh, and, uh, you know, you learn to manage situations under pressure because that's what medicine is. Uh, so you face unexpected, you know, emergencies uh, you've got to keep your mind calm, to think clearly, and uh, make the right decision, even when uh, the situation is not good. So, obviously, you've got to be patient with people, because uh, in the type of patients I manage, you know, we talked about frustrations area. You know, if you're talking about liver medicine, probably a third, or up to two thirds actually of uh, liver medicine is about what people do to themselves, either you know, viral infections or alcohol, uh, it takes time to speak to people and to turn around some people, which sometimes we manage to stop causing harm to themselves. Uh, and obviously, if patients are, you know, disruptive because of intoxication, you know, again, you've got to have that understanding and uh, know how to deal with those people. But it's not just about dealing with patients. It's about dealing with uh, colleagues as well. And those colleagues, you know, if you are training, would be senior to you. And, uh, you know, if you are a senior or a consultant, you know, obviously it's about dealing with different personalities with your, within your team, whether the junior doctors, nursing staff, and other people that work with you. So you've got to learn to be patient to run an effective. So beyond the science, beyond uh, the medical uh, intricacies, there is the aspect of patients, and you both have referred to patients as a virtue in medicine. I guess it's a virtue in all professions, but more so in yours. Yeah, absolutely. Medicine is uh, both a science and an art. So Could you say more about that? Well, yeah, so medicine is a science and an art because, you know, the understanding of diseases, how to treat them is scientific, but working with people and teams is an art. So that, as a scientist, doesn't always come naturally. You've got to learn, and most of the time you learn that from other people. In other people, it comes more naturally than others. So unfortunately, you know, that's how it is. So there will be other people who will be more patient. You know, they'll run better teams than others because uh, it's not, you know, un, uh, you know, something that comes naturally to everybody. Dr. Zimba, did you learn the artistry of uh, being a medical doctor when you were in Riyadh, or this is something as Dr. Nkoma is saying that you have picked up through upbringing, family relations, friendship relations. Where does that artistry come from? I honestly believe it's something that I have picked up along the way through family and the different people that I have encountered in my journey as a medical doctor. I don't think it's something that has been taught at the university. I'm sure oh, I beg to be corrected, but it's time to be corrected rather, but I think it's something that it, it's a continuous learning process. Dr. Nkoma, you are a consultant physician. You are training these young ones. Yes. Is that part of the deal? Yes, it's certainly part of the deal in training of doctors. One of the things we get is, you know, whether, you know, from junior doctors to senior doctors, you need to get feedback from your colleagues. So you get that feedback from junior doctors, consultant colleagues, nursing staff, other staff that you work with. But you also get written feedback from the patients uh, who tell your supervisor what type of person you are. And uh, obviously that helps you to reflect on your behavior uh, and uh, to change where that is required. So 
we do that probably more this side of our training than uh, back home. And I think, you know, that would be important because uh, to run an effective team, to be an effective physician to patients, you've got to have an ability to relate to them and communicate at their level so that, you know, you can make the changes that are required. So it is very, very important to, you know, to give and receive feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Dr. Zimba, as a young medical doctor working in Zambia, there are many challenges that our medical profession, medical sector of our nation is going through. What is your ambition? What is your highest aspiration with regard to medicine and maybe even more you have for our country? So a great philosopher, an American philosopher once said, um, your health is your wealth. So I believe that as a country for us to progress, we need our people to be healthy. Zambia cannot develop if its people are not healthy. So this is something that is supposed to be worked on both by the government and by the citizens. And in a country that has limited resources, I would advise to prevent better than to cure because you put in more resources into paying to cure that disease than actually preventing the disease. So you're emphasizing um, the public's awareness of our own contribution to maintaining our individual and collective health. Yes. Dr. Nkoma, what is your ambition? What is your highest aspiration for our country? So uh, uh, I like the way Dr. Zimba has put it. So the type of medicine that we do, as I said earlier, is uh, actually at the top of the medical food chain. Uh, before people get to where we are, you need to prevent illness. And uh, you can do that by doing community education, obviously restricting harmful habits, but obviously, for the minority of the people that come to where we are in the hospitals, we need to have an ability to deliver health care they need. That requires a skilled workforce. It's not just uh, the doctor and the specialists, you know, who most, you know, mostly we lack uh, because we've not trained enough over the years. But it is the nursing care, the physiotherapy, the pharmacists. And for these services to be delivered closer to where people live. So you cannot have people traveling from Northern Province, Luapula, Eastern Province to come to Lusaka to have specialist health care. We need to get the Zambian leadership to work coherently or in synergy as we call it in medicine so that we can pull all these resources to better, uh, I mean, together so that we target you know, primary health care where it is needed, secondary health care or tertiary health care where it is needed. And then we want to be part of it, me and others, because I'm just one of the people who is working elsewhere. Uh, there are a lot of Zambian experts in almost everything from biomedical medicine, very specialized clinical medicine, laboratory medicine, nursing, management roles in the diaspora. We as Zambians can do better than we're doing now if we put our act together within the resources that we, we have. But obviously, the Zambian government has got to invest in medicine. It cannot just be at the mercy of uh, the donor community. As uh, we've learned lessons from the COVID pandemic, you know, they do prioritize vaccines to their own people. We didn't have the money to buy those things. By the time we're getting these vaccines, you know, we had mutant viruses and people were still getting infected. We have got to start investing in our own healthcare. And uh, we have learned now that uh, we, if we have a pandemic, even those that have, have the means to travel, you know, if the airspace is closed, you've got to be treated in Zambia. So this should be a wake up call. Uh, there isn't anything that we lack. Probably we don't have enough money but we can do something about our economy so that you know when it is more productive we fund our healthcare system 
But obviously, you know, for those people who donate money to us as well, we can better utilize their funds to maximize the effect on the healthcare that is delivered in our country. Having said that, you know, my ambitions go beyond Zambia because uh, over the past, you know, two and a half years, we've had a lot of interaction on the continent of Africa with colleagues in America to mentor and teach medical students, supervise their dissertations, and mentor doctors in training in specialist gastroenterology and hepatology. We've run some clinical pathological meetings with colleagues in Nigeria. And uh, you know, I've been able to deliver a teaching session to the specialist college uh, for Eastern Southern Africa, which is based in Kampala, Uganda. Thank you very much, both of you, for expressing your ambition and that which goes beyond the boundaries of our country. And my final question to you both, uh, beginning with Dr. Zimba, is if you had only one magical wand, and that magical wand allowed you to shift fundamentally something about our medical sector, where would you swing that magical wand, Dr. Zimba? Do I only get one magical wand? Only <laughs> one. <laughs> only one this time. <laughs> okay. I think I would swing the wand towards um, resourcefulness. I think we need more medical personnel. Looking at the WHO records of 2020, those were the, the latest ones that I found. The recommendation is that we should have one doctor to 1,000 people. And looking at our population, which stands at about 18.3 million, our current patient doctor population, in fact, doctor patient uh, ratio is one to what 12,000. Mm. So I think this is something that we need to work on. If I was to swing the magical wand, I would swing it towards this area. One doctor per 12,000 yes. people. Yes. That's, that's frightening. Okay. That's frightening. Dr. Nkoma, your magical wand. So my magic wand would be, in the position in which I am now, is to make opportunities and the training for people like Dr. Zimba better and easier than what we had. So that is a future of uh, you know, medicine. It's a future of anything else in our country. We have a challenge at the moment. Uh, you know that uh, it takes two years for poor school leavers to get into university because they cannot access a loan. They are not like you and me when we went to university, when we were free, no responsibility. Some of them by then will have families. The training program now for most universities in Zambia is six years. At the end of six years of their training, although Dr. Zimba said we do not have enough healthcare personnel, it will take them another 18 months to two years for them to employed and contribute to healthcare delivery in Zambia. That is our topmost priority because within the coming five years, if we provided the right opportunities to young people like Dr. Zimba, which we can facilitate training for in the various places where we are, virtually or physically they can come here, we can train them. We are going to sort out the deficit in specialist care that we provide in Zambia to reduce health tourism. Thank you, Dr. Zimba. Thank you, Dr. Nkoma. Not only for creating the time to chat with me on Zambition, but also for the work that you do. I happen, as I said earlier on, to know both of you. And I know, just know too well, how both of you go beyond the call of duty to attend to people in their most vulnerable moments, when they are unwell, when they are struggling for well-being, but also when their loved ones are suffering because they have someone who is unwell. Thank you for dedicating your lives to this work. May you be well, 
May you continue to be open-hearted in your profession. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for us. hosting us and uh, for this uh, program, which is bringing all Zambians together. Having listened to the dialogue and followed my conversation with our guest, I now invite you to look at the drawing that emerged out of that dialogue. Take time to see the contours, the colors, the images that are reflected on the painting, on the drawing. Pay attention to what the drawing evokes in you. What are the feelings, what are the thoughts that are ignited by you looking at the painting? What thoughts does the painting generate in you with regard to your own leadership? What thoughts, feelings and images does this painting evoke in you with regard to the future of our country? Kindly share your reflections on this channel so that we can continue the dialogue on the future of the country we all love, on the future of our nation. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.